Hello everyone, this video is going to be about how to play CD-ROM games in DOS and Windows 3.1 without a physical CD-ROM attached to the computer. I'm currently testing an ITX Llama motherboard, which is a modern motherboard that's designed to play Windows 98 and DOS games. You can check the descriptions for a link on the motherboard if you want more information on it. But I do not have a CD-ROM attached to the motherboard, so CD-ROM games are an issue. But this video is going to show you how to change that. There's two methods I'm going to show you. One method will show you how to mount a folder on your computer, and DOS will see that folder as a CD-ROM drive. Another method shows you how to mount actual CD-ROM ISO images in DOS so they look like CD-ROM drives. This tutorial is for DOS and Windows 3.1 PCs. If you're using Windows 98, you're better off using Daemon tools because that's much better for that OS. At the end of the video, I discuss the advantages and disadvantages to using these methods. There are issues, so your experience is not going to be perfect. Also, if you want a quick usage guide for all the commands in this video for these programs, I provide links in the description for quick setup guides. Anyway, let's begin. So first, let me show you the folder mounting method. I feel it's the better one overall, but it is a bit more involved than the ISO one. So let's start. So for this method, you're going to need DOSBox installed on a Windows or Mac PC. This is because you actually need a way of copying the CD-ROM files or ISO files onto a folder. Since I have no CD-ROM on my ITX Llama, I can't do that from the Llama itself, so I have to use a computer with DOSBox installed. You also need some programs to run in DOSBox and on the ITX Llama. These programs are FakeDR and MTCD. I'll provide the links to these in the description. On my computer, I created a folder specifically for DOSBox that I mount in DOSBox. And on that folder, I created another folder where I extract all the fake DR files to. And on your ITX Llama, you want to extract the fake DRs to a folder there and also the MTCD files. I extracted both the fake DR and MTCD files onto the same folder. All right, so now I'll get into my computer with DOSBox installed. And I have some CD ISOs on my computer that I want to use on my ITX Llama. And I want to mount those ISOs into DOSBox. So to mount an ISO in DOSBox, I do that with this command. And after executing the command, you will see a message that the CD image was mounted. Now we need to copy all the files of the CD-ROM over to a new folder on the DOSBox C drive I created. So on the DOSBox C drive, I'll create a folder with a name that's similar to the CD I am copying. Since I'm copying the game Screamer 2, I'll just call the folder S2. And to copy all those CD-ROM files, I'll run this xcopy command. When the copying is done, I need to create some information files now. This is done with the info DR program that's included in the fake DR download. And this is the command to create the info files. After the command is executed, it tells me the info files are created. This game I just copied was an ISO file, but you can also do this with binq files. Before I continue, let me show you a process I created that quickly mounts a CD, copies the CD files onto a folder, then creates the information files for the CD. I did this by creating a batch file that runs all the commands I need. And here is the batch file. On this first line here, I can set what the name of my ISO file is. And on the second line, I set it to the name of the directory I want the files to copy to. This third line unmounts any previously mounted CD. And after the third line, I have two lines that mount CD images. One is for an ISO file and the other is for a bin.q file. I only need one of those, so the one that I do not want to run, I start the line with REM, so that line will be ignored. If you look at both those image mount lines, you can see that I have some text and case and percentage characters. That's the variable name that's at the top line, called ISO name. So instead of actually using ISO name on that line, it will use what I set it to at the top, which is A dark, which is an ISO of the Alone in the Dark game. Further down, you can see that the batch file switches to the C drive, then creates a directory to what I set DOS name equal to. And if you look at the top, DOS name is equal to a dark also. Moving on, it runs the xcopy command that copies all the files from the CD onto the a dark directory. And finally, the command to create the information files is executed. So all I have to do to set the variables at the top to the name of the ISO I want to copy and the directory that I want to copy it to. I also have to make sure that the ISO files are saved to this folder. 
or else the copying won't work. These folders will be different on your computer. Let's go back to DOSBox so I can show you how it works. Here I am in DOSBox and I named the batch file infodr.bat. So all I have to do to run it is type infodr. And all the commands are being run. Right now it's copying the CD files onto the directory that I specified. And when the file copying was done, the command to create the info files was automatically executed and I'm ready to copy these files onto my ITX Llama. Now that I created the needed files for Screamer 2 and Alone in the Dark, I need to copy the folders I created for those games into a flash drive that I can plug into my ITX Llama and copy them to a DOS install that I have. Okay, so here I am on my ITX Llama and I have a USB flash drive with all the files I need connected to it. Upon booting the ITX Llama, I'll go into the BIOS and make sure USBs are set as fixed disks. This will make the flash drive act like a fixed hard drive when I load DOS, making it accessible over DOS. And when DOS is loaded, I'll copy the CD files from the flash drive onto a folder on my SD card's DOS install. After the copying is done, I'm ready to mount one of these folders as a CD-ROM drive. Let me show you where I have my fake DR files. This is the location, and I also added this location to the path line on my autoexec.bat file. This makes it easier to run the commands. Before we mount a folder, we need to set up the MTCD program because this program lets me fake a CD-ROM drive even though I do not have one attached to my ITX Llama. You need this program because Microsoft CD-ROM extensions is required and that won't run unless a physical CD-ROM drive is installed and MTCD will fake a physical CD-ROM drive. Okay, to configure MTCD, Let's modify the config.sys file and add this line. On your computer, you're going to have to modify this line to point to the directory where you stored fake DR to. Then modify the autoexec.bat file and add this line. Save both files and restart the computer so MTCD can load. You can see on boot up that Microsoft CD-ROM extensions loaded and the empty CD drive letter is F. Okay, now we can mount a folder as a CD-ROM. The command to do that is this. After executing the command, fake DR has told me that the mounting is successful. And the folder is mounted as CD-ROM drive F. Let me browse the F drive now. And I see the Screamer 2 files. I'll run its installation. After the installation is done, I'll run the game. And the game works. Now let me exit the game and show you how to unmount the folder. You do that by running this command. Now if I go to the CD-ROM drive and try to list its contents, I get an error, confirming that the folder was unmounted. If I try to load the game again, I'm asked to insert a CD. So that's how you use fake DR. I would suggest creating a batch file for each game that will mount the game directory, run the game, and then when the game exits, unmount the directory. That way you do minimal typing. Okay, so now let me show you how to mount CD ISOs in DOS. So the program that allows you to use CD ISOs in DOS is called SHSUCD. Check the description to get the download links to these files. So what I did with the SHSUCD download is extract those files onto a folder in my DOS install. And it's located in this path here. I also made sure to include that folder in the path line of my autoexec.bat file, as shown here. So here I am where my ISO files are located, so let me list them. I'm going to choose to mount the Jetfighter ISO file that's stored here. So to do that, you run this command. After the command is executed, we get some information. We need to pay attention to this driver name here. We will need it for when we run the next command. And that command is this one. Remember, we have to enter the image driver name after the slash D switch. And after the second command is executed, we get even more information. Here we are told what drive letter the CD ISO was assigned to. 
this image was assigned to drive letter E, so let me go there and list its file contents. We can see that the mounting is working correctly as I can see the file contents. Let me run this game's installer to see if it works. And it does. So after I finish this installation, I'm going to run the game. And the game is running. Now let me show you how to unload the driver. You'll have to run two commands. You run this one first. And then you run the second one. The driver is now unloaded. And if I try to access the E drive, I get an invalid drive specification. And if I try to run the game, you can see I get an error telling me to make sure that the Jet Fighter 3 CD is in the CD-ROM drive. And that's it. That's how you use SHSU CD. Like fake DR, I also recommend creating batch files that will automatically load the driver, run the game, and unload the driver when the game exits. Okay, so now let me talk about the advantages and disadvantages to using these programs. First, the good. Obviously, these programs allow you to play CD-ROM games without having a physical CD-ROM drive attached. And other advantages, even if you do have a CD-ROM attached to your computer, are the faster transfer speeds because all the CD files are in a hard drive. This may differ from computer to computer because some systems might have a really slow hard drive and a really fast CD-ROM drive. Specifically, some advantages to using fake DR is that you'll be able to use CD-ROMs that have CD audio on them. It won't play the CD audio, but you won't have to worry about if your ISOs support CD audio tracks or not. However, there is a way to use CD audio with fake DR, but you still need a real CD-ROM attached. Fake DR gives you the option of rerouting CD audio calls from its driver directly to a real CD-ROM drive. So if you have a system with a real CD-ROM drive and still want the benefits from faster data transfers from the hard drive, then fake DR will give you the best of both worlds, as long as you have a real physical CD-ROM drive and a disc to play the game with. Some issues that I have with fake DR is that it doesn't support ISOs. So that means you have to go through the cumbersome aspect of copying the needed files and creating the necessary info files. Also, I read on a site that games with copy protection will not work. So fake DR will not act as a crack for a game. I haven't tested this, so I cannot confirm. Specifically for SHSU CD, what's good about it is that it works with ISO images. So it's much easier to transfer what you want to play. No need to copy tons of files from a CD or creating information files. However, the issues I have with SHU CD are that it's going to be difficult to play games with Redbook Audio because you'll have to find ISO images that have the Redbook Audio cracked out. Also, SHSU CD will only work with ISO files, so bin.q or other type of CD images will not work with it. There is a program that SHSU CD comes with that will allow you to create image files. Also, according to Phil's computer lab, SHSU CD has performance issues, so slower computers could experience slowdowns. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful, so keep an eye out for the next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.